What's up guys, day 27 of the video blog here. I think it's day 27. Oh, and we're going to call it day 27. And I'm um, super excited today actually. And one of the reasons is it's got all these little slips in the mail. These are package slips. It means I have a present probably for myself at waiting for me at the post office. And one of these is a brand new Blendtec blender. It's like a $600 bright, shiny red blender that can blend a computer, like blend an iPhone. I'm pumped. I'm going to blend my old blender. For the last two months, I've been using this like retarded excuse for a magic bullet that they sold at the Media Mart, which is a retarded excuse for Best Buy here in Hungary. And this is the worst blender I've ever seen. And I'm pretty chill, I'm pretty calm, you know, I find the humor in it, but literally it shoots hot coffee all over my kitchen. I think my mate hates me. So I'm pretty pumped to have a brand new blender. So today I'm going to announce the winners of the contest that I ran on Tiltbook for the most original comments on my blog. I think people will be excited because I'm giving away free money. In third place, winning $10, was Tiltbook user Vin, V-I-N-N. That name's easy, I may mispronounce the, some of the other ones. Uh, he wrote on my video for day 16, which was taking responsibility for your brain chemistry. He says, thanks for sharing. I didn't know how many things can affect the way you think and the brain. Guess you learn something every day, they say. I don't drink, so much people do, that's the only way to have fun. I do get angry when getting rivered, I think any poker player does. Haha. Uh -huh. As for being depressed, I think it's the way a person thinks. You are in charge of making yourself happy, I believe. Agree with that. Are you studying to be a psychologist? Already did. Watching your video is going to make me think about getting angry and how I am going to try and take care of my brain more, too. Thanks a lot. I thought that was a cool comment. It touches on a bunch of things. And um, specifically what I would say to you, Vin, is... You said, so many people think that drinking is the only way to have fun, and you don't drink. And I, you know, I commend you for that. I don't think there's anything wrong with drinking. I think there's something wrong with the way a lot of people do a lot of things. I mean, not necessarily wrong, like I'm judging them, more just like to their own detriment. So, I mean, I think there's ways for people to drink and have it enhance their lives. There's ways that people drink that takes away from their lives. It depends on you. And for you, the most enhancement of your life may not be drinking at all. I mean, for me right now, I'm not drinking at all, and I'm pretty happy with it. If I choose to drink in the future, cool. Um, but then you say, I do get angry when getting rivered. I think any poker player does. Well, those kind of things conflict a little bit. Because you see the world in a way in which, you know, drinking is not the only way to have fun. But you don't see the world in a way that getting angry is not the only way to deal with the river card coming. And I don't know if you see my point here, but as long as you believe that way, it will continue to be true. You need to create the space in your brain for it to be different. As long as you think that all poker players get mad when the river card comes and it's not in their favor, well, you're going to definitely continue to get mad when the river card comes because it's impossible not to because everybody does, right? There's no such thing as a person who doesn't care. So as long as you believe that way, you're going to be trapped in that. Um, just like somebody believes that the only way to have fun when you go out is to get you know, super wasted, well, they're never going to be able to have fun going out and not getting super wasted because they don't even think it's possible for somebody else, let alone them. So, I'll tell you, I laugh sometimes when the river card comes, and that's a reaction as well. But most of the time, I don't have a reaction at all. It's like, eh, whatever. And I think, you know, playing stakes that you're rolled for helps for that. I mean, certainly it's really hard not to react when the money means something to you, and maybe means something to your ability to make future earnings and stuff like that. But uh, overall, it's certainly possible to not react to a river card. And uh, if you don't believe that, you should, because it'll help you become it. It'll help you become someone who isn't emotionally reacting to the, you know, turned nervous in poker. And I'm not saying that's necessarily the most fun approach to the game. Certainly, I think recreational players, it's good that they, you know, get excited and stuff. But if you're a professional and that, you know, probably if you're on Tiltbook, that's the route you're trying to go. If you want to be a professional poker player, you need to think of the game as a learning strategy game. And there's really no place for emotional responses to elements of chance in a mental battle of wits. So I would just encourage you to realize that it's, you know, it's not every poker player who reacts emotionally to turns and rivers. It's, it's possible not to, and you should, you should think about it. 
Um, and it seems like you are thinking about it, uh, and I appreciate your comment a lot. So $10 for you, uh, PM me, your PokerStar screen name. Coming in in second place was, I believe it's Johan1988, Jahan, I, I might have miscopied it, but you comment on my stuff all the time, and I really appreciate you. Uh, you wrote on the same post, taking responsibility for your brain chemistry, though I generally agree, I have to make a point. If I had to be so focused how everything has an impact on me, I wouldn't do anything else. Sometimes it's just better to not care about everything so much and just live. I like your comment because you disagree with me a little bit, or at least raise a point of contention. And that's cool, and that takes courage, and, you know, especially because it's on my blog, you know, whatever. And I really like opposing viewpoints because it's not even really an opposing viewpoint. I agree with you, and I think you agree with me to a point. Like, there's definitely a space for both. And what I would say for my own life is that if I set aside the time to, to think about these things and to plan out my life a bit and understand my direction and understand how all the different factors in my life are affecting it and what things are important to me, what things I'm going to allow to affect my life, what things I need to, you know, put at arm's length and say, no, like, that's not for me. I'm not going to allow that to come into my sphere of influence and, you know, take me down this path. Having those things set out ahead of time means you don't have to think about them all the time. Um, personally, I used to take really long time in the shower in the morning getting ready because I was planning my day and it was just a jumble of thoughts. Like I'm thinking about everything from my love life to my, my career to where I'm living in the world to like, I miss my mom. Like my whole life is just in my head. Well, you know, and I'm, I'm not, I didn't have it all mentally together. So I think activities take me longer because I'm getting sidetracked by all these like kind of rattling thoughts inside my head. But when I take the time, you know, right now, I personally, I like to take time in the morning, but whenever it is that you take the time, whether you, you know, whether it's meditation, whether it's just writing some stuff down on a piece of paper, having an in-depth, deep and meaningful conversation with a good friend, um, whatever it is you do, you go for a walk, whatever time you set aside to kind of plan your life out, think about what you're going, what your goals are, what is working in your life, what's not working in your life, what you would like to create in your life and what you would like to eliminate from your life, as long as you take that time somewhere, I don't think you need to be thinking about it all the time at all. I think actually it's easier that you don't have to really think about it because you've already done the work. It's kind of just like poker in that regard. If you're playing a bunch of tables and somebody, you know, on the bubble has a chip lead and you're in second and you don't know if you should min raise call, min raise fold, open shove, open fold, you don't, if you're playing a bunch of tables, you don't have the time to math that out right now. You don't have the time to figure it out. You need to already know. Um, and if you just try to like make a hasty decision, you might make the wrong one. But when you've done the work away from the table, when you've done the math, when you've studied the hands, I mean, it's easy. And I talk about that a lot. The reason I like to study, even if I have a lot of volume to play, is because it makes the day easier. You know, just being in that mindset where I've already taken the time to do some work, so my brain's kind of, it's ready. And if you've already taken the time to figure out how things impact your brain and be cognizant of it and, you know, kind of place in your, in your approach to life, what things are good for you, what things are bad for you, what you're going to allow, what you're going to foster and create more of and what you're going to, you know, walk away from and have less of, well, then you don't have to think about it all the time. It'll just be natural. You'll, you'll just flow and your life will naturally flow in the direction you want it to because you've taken that time to have a direction. You don't have to think about it all the time. It's just inside. So I think we actually agree with each other. I just, maybe I didn't fully explain that when I say everything affects your brain chemistry... I'm not advocating being like extremely neurotic and OCD at all. I mean, it's quite the opposite. It's get. It's almost like if you get all your worrying out of the way, and not I don't call it worrying, but if you get, I mean, anxiety is kind of a manifestation of a lack of planning sometimes, or a lack of you know stability or direction. If you get all that stuff handled in a way, or handled more than it is now. Well, then it's kind of gone. You know, the, the symptoms, the racing thoughts, the uncertainty, all that stuff is kind of symptoms of not having that direction and that understanding in your life. And if you have all that stuff or you have a, you know, you have it sorted out to a degree, it eases the amount of tension as you go through the world. So, 
Yeah, I certainly agree. Just live sometimes, but also take some times to, you know, just have a thought on what your life should be. So, and that kind of brings us to number one. Uh, my winning comment was from Kipisaz, K I P I S H A Z. Sorry, I'm terrible with form, with, uh, I don't know, pronouncing things. <laughs> so, um, anyway, he writes. How many tables have you been playing, and does that influence your A game? Because I seem to lose focus when playing too many tables. There's not much space left to think and do something out of the blue. Um, me or you could just try to do the best line every game you play, and after some time, it looks like other players seem to read you well. How would you suggest to solve this kind of problem? Thank you. I like this one because it kind of brings me back to the tangible, because I like to talk in you know, theoretics a lot. Well, currently I'm playing anywhere from 12 to 16, 17, 18 tables. Most of the time I'd say it's right around 14. 14 is kind of what I've built my brain up to at this point. And if I push beyond that, I burn out a lot faster. So if I push to 16 or 17, I, I immediately like, oh, uh, and then like start winding down and that's not good. So you got to find the number for you. And I've been playing sit and go since 2008. You know, I've got a great setup. I, you know, I have a stack and I have uh, another screen that previews all my tables. I haven't, you know, I just have a setup that works for me and I've been working at this a long time and sort of like what we were talking about in the last comment, if you've done the work, you can play more tables because the decisions are easier. And I've talked about that a lot, but if you've done, if you've done your stuff and you know your stuff, well then your A game's going to deteriorate less and less as you add more tables because you're going to get less and less difficult decisions because you know more stuff. But you're always going to not know everything. And you're always going to have that worry that if you're playing too formulaic, well, your opponents can take advantage unless you really work to foster an inexploitable strategy, which may not be the most winning strategy possible. I mean, it's kind of a fact that as you add more tables, your ROI has to deteriorate somewhat unless you were already playing perfectly, which is impossible pretty much because, I mean, none of us are game theory optimal robots. So what I'm saying here is it is more profitable usually, especially versus recreational players, to play an exploitive style that exploits their tendencies but also would leave you open to being exploited yourself because it doesn't really matter if you're open to being exploited by your opponents if your opponents aren't going to realize and exploit you in the manners that you're leaving yourself op open. So it is easier to take advantage of the weaker players. Um, certainly if you end up heads up in a sit and go and you're kind of deep, it really sucks to have a bunch of tables and not be able to give it the focus it deserves. And those are considerations and your ROI per game will go down as you add more tables. However, if you're making good rake back and um, you know, you're know you trying to reach a VPP goal like myself, your hourly may still increase. I mean, my games may go down from a, you know, 1.2% ROI pre rake back to like, or, you know, whatever to a 0.8 or something. But the rake back on the games is so significant, especially at the higher stakes that it doesn't really matter. You know, I mean, a, a $60 hyper turbo, your average ROI is going to be somewhere around 1% if you're really, really good. I mean, it could, I don't know, it could be 0.5. I mean, that stake's really tough. It's got a lot of regs and the, uh, the rake's double 30s, exactly, so it didn't get a reduction. So, I mean, your average profit per game may be like, I don't know, 30 cents per rake back. And, you know, the difference between a 1% ROI and a 0.5 is in, like not that much money. But the rake back, I mean, if you're a supernova elite, you're making 73 cents on like 234. So, or 254. So, I mean, the average profit per game from rakeback is just so huge. As long as you still play, you know, semi-close to profitable, just adding more tables at a slight ROI reduction is just more money per hour. But at a certain degree, if you're, you know, way above your head, well then, yeah, it's going to be bad. You're going to be, you know, getting your head kicked in, um, metaphorically, you know. And it, you need to assess that for yourself. You need to find the point where your games deteriorate to the fact that you're no longer profitable and you need to learn to assess when adding more tables makes you more money versus less. And certainly as your ROI goes down, your variance is going to increase, especially if you're, you know, when we're playing on poker stars and our, our bonuses come in the form of, you know, redeemable bonuses. So we're not getting that daily rake back. Like our variance is going to be pretty significant in, in between bonuses. So those are just kind of things you have to factor out for yourself. 
But those are the considerations I would hold in your head when you're trying to figure what works for you best. And uh, currently for me, for a lot of reasons, I've found 14 tables. I play a mix of games, table selected uh, from 30 to to $100, occasionally 200 turbos right now. I've played much higher in the past. It's just where I'm at now. And um, I'm working on my game a lot. And, you know, if in a session I feel overwhelmed, I just drop my number of tables or drop my stakes or whatever. You know, I listen to my body, I listen to my brain, and uh, I do the best I can. So, yeah, you win $25 for the most original comment. Um, it was hard to decide between them all. They were all really good. And a lot of the other comments that didn't win prizes were also really good. So, anyway, you three guys, if you want to PM me your star screen name on Tiltbook, I will ship you the monies. And thank you guys very much for your comments, your participation, and you guys continuing to watch my videos. You really helped me have the motivation to get out of bed and do this challenge. So thank you. I appreciate you very much. And we'll talk again soon. Peace.